morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us at Clearview Church Online. We're getting ready to head into a time of worship right now, so get up on your feet, make some noise, and join us in worship. Good morning, everybody. We're so excited to worship with you all today. Come on, let's sing this straight to him. Come on, one voice we sing to him. Come let us worship our King Come let us bow at His feet He has some great things See what our Savior has done And see how His love overcomes He has some great things He has some great
your promise and it won't stop now. Lord, your presence is here with us. Do what only you can do, Lord. Lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Above any distractions, anything else, Lord God. One name holds weight above them all. His fame outlasts.
Hey, good morning and welcome to Clearview Church. We're so glad you could join us. It was a great time of worship and it's time to get into the Word. And I just want to share with you, if you're tuned in online, uh, then you're missing out on the celebration that's happening this morning on campus. Uh, we've got three people, at least three people being baptized. Maybe by the end of the service we'll have more. Uh, we're, we have a child dedication today of Ainsley Marie Powers, and we are so excited for the life that's happening in and through Clearview Church. And, and uh, I just want to welcome you uh, to what God's doing. And what God's been doing is we're seeing life change and transformation with the three baptisms that are happening today. Uh, one is our son Levi, who is seven years old, and I'm so excited about it because uh, throughout this season where we've been at home and we've been together as a family, uh, we, we've taken the time to really strategically disciple our kids as we have before, but it gave us extra time uh, for our kids to catch some things that mom and dad do on a regular basis, like read the word and, and create atmospheres of worship. But it also gave us the time to walk our kids through some very simple things like the fruit of the spirit, the books of the Bible, the Lord's prayer. And through that, our son at seven years old said, I love Jesus. I want to be baptized just like Jesus did. And so today he's following the footsteps of Jesus and he's going to get baptized. And then uh, one of the other baptism candidates, his name's Taylor, and Taylor uh, is an adult and uh, had, through his life, had a lot of cycles. And one of the things he wanted to break was that cycle. And the way that he came to that conclusion was embracing Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And so today he's going to publicly proclaim Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The inward decision that he made to make Jesus his Lord He's publicly proclaiming through baptism. And then the third one, I'm going to save it for later uh, because she's going to actually share her testimony at the end of our online service to, to share the gospel and the good news of, of what it means to uh, have lived for the Lord, have run away, and to come back to who God is and the goodness of our Savior. So uh, I'm going to save that for later and let her share her story. Uh, but we just want to tell you that on campus today, there's a lot to celebrate. The child dedication where we dedicate children back to the Lord. God has gifted us with our kids. And as parents, we want to create and foster environments for our kids to have every opportunity to connect to Jesus and embrace him as their Lord and Savior. And so in that, we charge the parents, we charge the extended family, and we charge the church. So you at home, uh, even though you may not be here for Ainsley's child dedication today, uh, I want to charge you that uh, when we're back together uh, in person and you're back with us, that uh, you are committed to creating and being the best example of who Christ is for all of our little ones, not just Ainsley, but for all of our little ones, uh, and that you are committed into creating the environment, that safe environment for kids to love church, experience God, grow friendships, and, and have an encounter with Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Um, so to get into the message this morning, uh, I get to do the first part. Pastor Sarah is going to bring the second part. But the first part is the simple gospel. And I know it's kind of the culmination of the last two weeks, but that's how God works when he starts to line things up. So two weeks ago, I preached the message of the gospel mindset. Last week, I preached a message on the, the mindset of celebration. And this week, I'm going to kind of put those two together. And I'm going to preach the side of the message on the simple gospel. So if you're taking notes, point number one is the simple gospel. We as human beings live in a fallen world that is separated from God because of sin. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that does not please God. But God has a plan and a story of redemption. And it's what we're celebrating today with the child dedication and the baptisms is that we are committing for that child's life to raise them in a way to encourage and undergird the parents in a way where that child has the best ability, the best leverage, that they are afforded the best opportunity to make a decision for Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior when they can come to the conclusion that Jesus died for them. And, and in the same way with the baptisms, every one of the people that are being baptized today are outwardly proclaiming the inward decision that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life. And if you've done that, but you haven't been baptized and taken that step of obedience and according in alignment with God's word, I would encourage you for our next baptism service that you sign up for it and you publicly proclaim that inward decision. But the, the simple gospel is this is that we live in a fallen world because of sin. Sin separates man from God. And in that, there is a process for redemption. And that process for redemption isn't anything that you or I can do, but it is what God has already done. 
You see, over 2,000 years ago, God sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you and for me. You, the, the Bible says it in John 3, 16, 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the bridge that God puts to build uh, a connection from humanity to the heavenly father. It's through the son. The son is Jesus. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For the son of man did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. The purpose of Jesus here on the earth was to save us, was to redeem us from our sins so that we could live with God forever. And it starts that journey here on the earth. The simple gospel is this. While we were still broken, while our lives are still far from God, Jesus still died for you and me. You see, every person on the face of the earth has this gift that sits right in front of them every day that they are alive. As long as there is air in their lungs and a heartbeat in their chest, there is the opportunity to open up this simple gift. And that gift, that gift is the gospel of Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior, dying for our sins and building the bridge that connects us to eternity with the Heavenly Father. Okay, And so Jesus is that gift. That gift sits in front of everybody. And there's going to become a day where, where there's that opportunity for those people to recognize that there's a gift sitting in front of me. And some people are going to take it and they're going to try and exchange it for something else. There's going to be some people that are going to unwrap it and they're going to be grinning ear from ear like, Man, this is what I've been looking for my whole life and I never knew it was right in front of me until God put somebody in their path who was obedient and said, hey, I know how you can get out of that pattern. His name is Jesus. I know what you're going through and I'm sorry that you're going through it, but let me offer you how I get to go through these things and make it out on the other side because I have hope always because my hope and trust is put in Jesus. And that gift begins to unwrap in front of them. And they realize that the answers they've been searching for the whole life has been gift wrapped for them. It costs them nothing. God paid the price. He gave us on Jesus to die on the cross. But how does that work? Romans 10, 9 says this, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. I'll say it again, Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. The gift is that simple. It was presented to you from the day you were born. And there's this opportunity that comes along in your lifetime where you're presented with the gospel. There are people groups around the world that are still untouched or unreached that haven't heard the gospel. And we're sending missionaries into those fields and praying and believing that they're going to have an opportunity to share the gospel. But the reality is that every person on the faith of the earth still has that gift sitting in front of them. The simplicity of the gospel is that you just have to believe. You have to declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you have to believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. How does that work? Ephesians 2, 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. So it's by grace through faith that you've been saved. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by your works so that no one can boast. Salvation comes through Christ alone. There is nothing you can do this side of eternity that's going to give you access to heaven except for accepting the free gift of the good news of the gospel that is Jesus Christ. That is the access point for you, for me, and every person who walks the earth. That is the gift. That is what sits in front of us. That is the simplicity of the gospel. So a quick review. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That Jesus didn't come to the earth to condemn it, but he came to save us. The way that that happens is that we declare it with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. We experience salvation. We experience the bridge. We experience the gift that's been sitting before us our entire life. And it happens through grace. It happens by grace and through faith that we are saved. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's nothing to do that can make you positioned more valuable for it. It is a free gift that God gave his plan for redeeming his creation to draw them back to him in relationship. That is the simplicity of the gospel. Now, Pastor Sarah is gonna bring an awesome word on the gospel that's sustainable. What an incredible day to be in God's house. 
And today I'm bringing you a portion of the word. Um, I get to tag team with my husband today, which just brings me the utmost joy. And I am digging into the sustainable gospel. Now, the way I want to start this is just by talking about being hungry. And here's the thing, we've all experienced the growls of your stomach when you're hungry. I inevitably get a good howl out of my stomach in a silent meeting. It's bound to happen. And the person to my right or my left usually gives me that touch of a side eye to let me know they heard it too. But what happens when you're hungry? You go and get something to eat, right? Of course you do. And through research and time, we know that there are things that are really good for you to eat, and we know that there are things that are not so good for you to eat. We know that there are, th there are foods that are going to fuel your body, that are going to bring you healthy nutrients, that are going to not just feed your hunger, but help you be stronger and healthier. They're going to take care of you. And then there are foods that are could do the exact opposite, foods that might just suppress that hunger for a very short season, but they're not going to give you anything good. There's also a thing called spiritual hunger. The actual dictionary defines hunger as a need or a craving, a desire. And sometimes we have those voids and places in our spiritual life, in our heart. We experience them through the day, through years. Um, they're there. It's an emptiness. It's a void. And a lot of times in our lives when that happens is we, we start to look for something to fill that void and, and people end up using lots of different things to fill that void throughout their lives. The bottom life is, is that we're hungering for something more than we can provide for ourselves. That's the bottom line. We're hungering for God, our creator to lead, comfort, love, guide, help. The list goes on. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So in this verse, and I, I'm not going to like pull it apart, but I want to share something with you is that the statements that are in here are absolute. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. But then God makes promises. He doesn't say, I can try and help give you strength. I might be able to do that. If you do this for me, I can do this for you. No, he says, I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you. That's power. That's a promise that comes threefold from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our culture is always telling people that we can do it on our own. Our culture tells us that we're strong enough. I'm good enough. I can do it. Now I'm created and I am confident in who God created me to be, but I cannot do my day to day and live my life to the fullest without God. His joy is my strength. His joy is what sustains me. His joy is what gives me endurance. His joy is what gives me the ability to persevere in the, in the oppression, in the difficult seasons. That comes from him. And that's what Nehemiah says. And Nehemiah was in the throes, in the throes of a tough time. And he says, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. The beauty of the relationship with God is that he is a king. I love this. I've had this picture in my mind for many, many years, and I think this is so incredible, is that he's a king, but he wants you in his presence. See, I can think of countless movies, historical figures, and even current people of power that the only way you can meet with them is that one, you have a good reason, two, certainly an appointment, and three, probably that you're a person of stature yourself. The creator of the universe doesn't require any of these things. He says, I just want you. I love you. I want all of you. I know your name, the number of hairs on your head. Don't try to take this life on yourself. Allow me to be a part of it. Allow me to lead you. The creator of the universe just wants to have you in his presence. No appointment needed. No prereqs required. He just loves you. I think that is just such an incredible thing to grab a hold of. There's no condition. He just loves you. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, and I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. I love this. It makes me think of a parent at a playground with their kids, and you have that as a parent. 
you want them to explore, you want them to go and try something, but you're always not super far away because you want to be there when they need you. And I look at God in this way that he wants you to follow the instructions. He wants you to follow his word. He wants you to live life according to the ways that he's given you because that's how we live an abundant and a full life. But he is right there with his loving eye on you, not his condescending eye, his loving eye. And that's incredible. We love because he first loved us. His love for you is greater than any love you can imagine, than any love you've ever experienced. It is perfect. It is steadfast, never fading or weakening. Whether you've been serving the Lord your entire life or today you've heard his heart for you for the very first time, I urge you not to take his care for you for granted. Do not let it become a standard part of your day, the usual the mundane, but let it become the part of your day that fuels you. Be conscious of the care that your father has for you. Today, we are blessed to celebrate. We are blessed to celebrate with three lives that have made the most important decision of their life they will ever make. But even more so, we are blessed to celebrate as brothers and sisters in the family of God in his house to celebrate the good things that he's doing, his loving eye, his steadfast love, his ongoing care for his children, because he's good and he's worthy to be praised. Today is an incredible day. And maybe for you, it's going to be the day that you hop into that race and put your feet in the starting blocks. Or today, it's a day that you're going to make a declaration in your life that from this day forward, you're going to live your life according to God's word. Either way, today is a day of celebration. Today is a day that we hold on to and that we raise a banner because our God is incredible. And I am so excited that the next word that is going to come to you is a testimony and a story of the goodness of God from beginning to end. His promises that were fulfilled as time went on. And as you hear this story, I pray that you take a moment in your life and think about your own story, your own life, because your story is God's opportunity to be moving through you, whether you've seen it or not. So I pray that as you hear this incredible story, you open up your eyes, you open up your heart to see what God is doing in your own life as well. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This has been prayed over me, spoken over me, said to me, texted to me, more times than probably any other Bible verse I can think of. I grew up in the church. I had a mama and a papa who got saved long before I even existed. And I knew this word, I knew that this verse was in me and ingrained in who I was at my very core. But if you know any part of my story, you also know that it might not be a huge surprise that this particular verse has been one that's been really hard to stomach at times. You see, I lost my dad when I was a teenager, I was 13. And for the better part of 20 years, I've been trying to figure out what his plans were, what they were then, what they've been in the last 20 years, and perhaps where to go now. It's hard because that plan didn't seem to make sense to me. And so for the better part of 20 years, I have asked, why me? Why did this happen to me? Why did my family experience so much trauma? And I got tired of asking that question. In the process of asking that question, it allowed me to justify completely running away from what I knew to be true. So in January of this year, I reached a point in my life where there was different grief, new grief, and I didn't want to ask why me anymore, but I was still running just a little bit. One Sunday morning, I was driving around before service and I was listening to worship music and I stopped for just a minute asking why me and I cried out to God and I just said, how me? How are you going to change this story 
this history, this past, into something for your glory because I believe that you know the plans are to prosper me, but how? Because there's so much pain now. All I heard in my spirit that morning was take this one step and go to church. The Lord was speaking to me and saying, take one step towards me and I'm gonna use your story for my glory. I drove to church that morning. I had met Pastor Donovan a handful of times. I had heard great things. I was seeing incredible things in the services that I was going to, but I was still struggling with the why. Why am I here? Why did these things happen? That morning, Pastor Donovan spoke about not necessarily having to see every single step on your journey up the mountain, but you just have to take one step of faith. So I sat on the front row crying at this point because it was just reaffirming what I had already been told that morning, that God was preparing to use me and I had no idea. After service, I went up to talk to Pastor Donovan and tell him this, that I had experienced this in the morning before church and then what he said. And then his next words out of his mouth were, I'm gonna pray for you in a minute, but when I'm done, I need you to go talk to my wife. Which, all right, I did it. And I went back and I spoke with Pastor Sarah. And her exact words next to that statement were, I prayed for you this morning and I didn't even know it was you. She proceeded to go on and tell me exactly what her prayers were. And it wasn't until I was writing this testimony that I realized that what she was praying over me was probably happening at the exact same time that the Lord was just dropping in my spirit to take one step towards him and stop running. I won't get into the details. I'm still discerning some of that now. But when I tell you that for the first time in 20 years, my life felt like it held value and worth that I hadn't felt since I was a 13 year old girl. There was healing, instant healing in that moment where two people who barely knew me and barely knew my story were speaking life into my very broken soul, reaffirming what the Lord was telling me, reminding me that I'm so loved that three moments in one day were going to add value to what I believe is the rest of my life. There's wholeness when we begin to say yes to, to the Lord. There's wholeness and healing when we begin to take steps towards that thing that we've been running away from, whether it's a call on our life, which is my story, or it's just simply trusting that he really does have the plans in the works for us. They might not look the way we want them to, but they are so much better than anything we could dream up for ourselves. I'm worthy of his love and I'm worthy of his time and his patience with me. No matter what I did, no matter how much I tried to run away or ignore this call in my life, I know this to be true now. Romans 8, 37 and 39, through 39 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, for I am convinced neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm preparing to take a step in an incredible journey because I know that I must trust and obey. This step is huge, but it's the next step in what I believe is a beautiful journey with the Lord by my side and no more running. There's no more running. There's no more need to run away. No more need to try and endure and persevere and run the marathon of life on your own. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God himself is here to sustain you, to run with you, and to lead you on the right path. 
There is a path and a plan that you are created for, that you have been created with skills and abilities, gifts and talents. And his love for you is great, greater than all the drops of water in the ocean, mightier than any storm that has ever graced the soil of the earth. His love for you is big. But our God is a gentleman. And he stands today, just as Pastor Donovan talked about, with a gift. A gift for you to just take. It's free. It's to receive. So if, if today, if you hear Sarah's story, if you hear some of the word of the Lord unpacked, and you say, I have been hungry for something. I have needed and desired something different in my life. I need to stop running on my own and I want to run with the Lord. I want to invite you to do that today. The Bible is is simple on how we do that. In Romans, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he died on the cross and rose again, then we are saved. It's a promise in scripture written by Paul. I encourage you to take a few moments and quiet your heart and talk to God. Sometimes it's even easier to talk out loud. But quiet your heart and talk to God. Say, God, I don't want to do this on my own anymore. And I want to do life with you. I want your guidance and your help, your direction. And I give my life to you. I promise you things will begin to change. Your perspective will begin to change. You'll begin to see God moving in your life. And if you're praying that prayer today, then I encourage you to let the family of God come around you. Please, please let us celebrate with you. Let us encourage you and run this race together. Email us at clearview at clearviewchurch.net or send us a message on Facebook because we so want to celebrate with you. This is the number one biggest decision you will ever make in all your life. And I promise you, you'll never, ever regret it.